so to speak. Because Rav Tzadik was a disciple of the Ishbitzer, who was a, a disciple of Rabunim of Peshista. And uh, the first quotation is a quotation from the Sefer Meashileach, which is the Sefer of the Ishbitzer, quoting his Rebbe. And uh, it's discussing a very interesting Shaila. We know that perhaps more than any other Yantaf, Pesach is surrounded with chumras, stringencies. Every other mitzvah, yeah, there are people that are strict, there are people who are lenient, people who follow the basic law, some people may embellish it a little bit. But Pesach, everyone goes overboard. And it almost becomes a joke. You know, everyone is looking over their shoulder to see what the other person is doing. Um, I once heard from Rabbi Tao, he, uh, a hysterically funny story. You know, it's one of these stories you can't really know whether it's true or not. But he was in the supermarket and he saw a lady pushing a shopping cart that was lined with tinfoil. <laughs> <laughs> and he asked her, uh, what are you doing? She said, I'm shopping for Pesa. You know, she's going to put the groceries in the uh, You should have cart. seen her car. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the truth is that, you know, I hear it, you know. <laughs> You know, the people line their uh, houses with tinfoil. I mean, why not the uh, shopping cart? And, uh, you know, every family says, we eat this, we don't eat this, and so on and so forth. And where did this idea come from? What is the significance of this fact of Chumras? And uh, he quotes, Rabbeinu Rabbinim Pashischa, Zech of Tadek B'Kadosh L'Vrach L'Chai Elam Haba Omar B'Zeh HaLashem. He said, and this is a quotation, Kol achumras, she is royal machmirim. All the stringencies that Jews observe, v'nayagim v'pesach, and they uh, observe and conduct themselves on Pesach, heim tachshitim lekedusha. These are ornaments. These are jewels, so to speak, for holiness. Remez lozet, and this is hinted to in the pasuk in Shir Hashirim, where. Uh, we praise the beauty of this woman, and it says, Savarech b'chayuzim. How beautiful is your neck embellished with strings of jewels or pearls. So there's a reference to the beauty of the neck embellished with these uh, strands of jewels. Now the Pasuk says like this, it says, Nava l'chayayach b'tayrim, that your Jaws are beautiful with tyrim. Tyrim is a type of uh, ornament where there were rows of pieces of gold or silver. And uh, these were worn apparently on the side of the face. I don't know if we have anything like that today. And uh, that beautified the jaws. And uh, the neck was beautified with charuzim. So what is the idea? What, what does this symbolize? Obviously everything in Shir Shirim is a muscle. Now we have uh, a muscle of a woman who is beautified by these ornaments for the uh, side of the head and for the neck. So one it says like this, Hainu, it means like this, Ki kol ha'adam v'haguf, all the limbs of a human being and of the body, Eino makabal shum tachshit, they don't receive any type of ornamentation, Shloiya shum shaychis, Unless the tachshit, the ornament, has some connection with that part of the body. In other words, on your hands, you wear gloves. Gloves fit the hands. So it makes sense. There's a, a function that the ornament has which uh, connects the ornament to the part of the body that it's being worn on. You know, your shoes are custom made to fit your feet and, or not custom made, you may buy them you know, off the rack, but the point is they're sized to fit your feet and uh, they're shaped in such a way to have a useful function. Either, either it's an article of clothing or some other type of covering. But the neck is miyuchad. There's something unique about the neck. The kabel tachshit, that it receives ornaments, af midover she'en lo shaychas even though the ornament has no connection to the neck at all. 
There was a person who wears a necklace. He doesn't perform any function for the neck. It's not like a scarf, which warms the neck. It just hangs there. Does it do anything for your neck? No. Because your neck is really nothing more than a hook on which you hang the necklace. And the truth is, there's a medrash which says it explicitly. It says in the Pasuk, in Shira Shirim, that Migdal David Savarech. Because your neck is like the Migdal David, like the Tower of David, which uh, is not what we call the Migdal David. Migdal David is a reference to the base of Migdash. And uh, the Medrash says an amazing thing. The Medrash says that Raiv Tachshitim, most ornaments are worn on the neck. So the Medrash here, here that, that the majority, the bulk of ornaments are worn on the neck. And uh, this means that the, the great beauty of Klaal Yisrael is the base of English. But there are other Mokaymas HaKadosh. You know, you have in Hebron, the Maras Machpel, and you have Kever Rochel. But the, the beauty, the Pe'er of Klal Yisrael is the Beis HaMikdash. This is where the Kehanim did the Avaidah, the Levim did the Avaidah. So if it's compared to the neck, because Rav Tachshitim are worn around the neck. So the neck is a different function. It, it's Makabal Tachshitim. It receives ornamentation. Tahainu which means you take something precious like pearls jewels, bazov, and gold they're not an article of clothing it's not to provide warmth in cold weather and it's not to provide coolness in hot weather but you hang it around the neck as a ornament and that's the idea of Vuhu Ho'inyan Shehech Mirbe Pesach. And that's the idea of the Chumras of Pesach. We'll explain this in a little more depth. Machmashat Tzavar Hu Kli Lekabal Hu Achilais. The neck is the vessel which receives food. All the food you eat goes down your neck and down your throat. Uve Eisek Achilas. And when it comes to foods, Shayach Kol Chumras Shod Machmir. All the chumras make sense. Even though really there's no place for chumras. Let's understand this a little bit. There's a metaphor which Chazal used. And there's a reality to this. That the mitzvahs that we do form levushim. They form garments. They form a ornamentation, a decoration for the human being. For example, when Chazal tell us the idea of hidr mitzvah, that when you do a mitzvah, you should do it in the most beautiful way. That the object with which you do the mitzvah should be a beautiful thing. We learn this from the Pasuk of Zekeli Va'anvehu. And Chazal teach the Pasuk this way, His na'e lefanov b'mitzvahs. Now, his na'e lefanov, grammatically, to translate the words, it doesn't mean to beautify the mitzvah object. It's to beautify yourself. It's a reflexive verb. Hisna'e, beautify yourself with the mitzvahs that you do. In other words, the mitzvahs are levushim. These are garments that you put on. So what are you putting on? Are you putting on jeans and a t-shirt? Or are you putting on a, a tuxedo? Right? That depends. In other words, if you do the mitzvah in a bare bones way, so you're dressing down. If you do it in a beautiful way, you're dressing up. You know, in the haftarah of Shabbos Hanukkah, you hasiru begadim hatzayim e'olecha, Remove the, the dirty clothes and put on beautiful white garments. Now, this is a metaphor for tshuva. At all times, your clothes should be white. This is a reference to tshuva. Whereas you're taking off the dirty clothes, you're putting on the clean clothes. They tell a Misa, I believe it was the Semach Tzedek, that they asked him when a person goes to the mikveh, what should the kavana be? What should the person have in mind? So he said, uh, come on, take off your clothes and put on your clothes. <laughs> but he explained that that's what he meant. It didn't mean, <laughs> obviously, you don't go to the mikveh with your clothes on. It means take off the begot matzayim, take off the averis, and put on the, the clothing of kedusha. That's what it means. That's the kavan of, of the mikveh. So there are, there are levushim. These are levushim, these are ornaments. When you do a mitzvah, you're putting on a beautiful ornament, you're putting on something which is unbecoming. Now, this pasuk you know, emphasizes two things, and uh, one explains the second one, but I'll explain the first one. The, the, the chayayich b'tayrim 
I believe, refers to the mitzvahs that are associated with speech. Because when a person speaks properly, speaks about appropriate things, and avoids all the averis that are associated with speech, lashon hara and nas devarim, rechilos, etc., the person is creating ornaments for his lechayayim. Nova lechayayach b'teirim. But how beautiful are your your cheeks? And by the way, I'll just mention that you see Chazal do take these psukim in Shirashirim and associate them with specific mitzvahs. There's a pasuk, Mayafu pa'mayich banaolim bas nadiv. How beautiful are your feet in shoes? And uh, the Gemara says, what does this refer to? It refers to how beautiful the footsteps of the Jewish people are. When they're oil and regal, how beautiful their feet are. Now, let's be honest. Feet are not the most beautiful part of a person's body. <laughs> well, very often they can be callous and uh, beyond a certain point, you may have bunions and <laughs> it's twisted. But, but uh, when a person uses his feet to be oil and regal, so the feet are beautiful. How beautiful are the feet? So here, when a person uses his mouth for a proper thing, that's novel lochayayach b'tayim. Now, there's a beauty associated with the lochayayim, with the with the jaws. Now here, savarech b'charuzim. This refers, Rabbanim says, to all the things associated with achila, because everything goes down the throat. So when a person eats properly, which means first of all eating things that are kosher, and eating with proper kavanas, and eating the things that are mitzvahs, and of course Pesach. We have both, as we have a tremendous zehirus in avoiding chametz, and we have a tremendous diktuk in the things that we eat. This is really the one time of year where there are f- specific foods that are really a key in mitzvah. So, so we are p- creating a, a decoration and adornment for our neck. That's that's savarech b'charuzim. And he says that the neck is something special because the neck is designed for ornamentation. It's not. Uh, the things you wear under your neck are not utilitarian, they're not functional. It's not for warmth or for, for protection from the heat. In other words, really, it's, it's a vehicle for beautification. So therefore, all the chumras, all the chumras of Pesach, these are tachshitim. These are tachshitim for the tzav. Look what he says. Uma gam, and especially so, shechag ha-Pesach hu biur ba-achilas. The whole idea of Pesach is the clarification <coughs> of eatings. Now, uh, let, let's understand this. Rav Tzadok wrote a uh, very long kuntras. It's published in the, uh, the end of the Pesach to Bereish. It's called Eisa uh, Eichel, about eating. And uh, he points out that the downfall of man came about through eating with the Chet of Eitz and this was the total uh, decline of, of humanity as we know the Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim and Kabbalah Satora was meant to be the complete tikkun the complete rectification of all the flaws that were introduced as a consequence of the Chet of Eitz it didn't work out that way because of the Chet so it ended up being only the beginning of the process. The completion of the process will be Bachar Sayyam. But this way it's how it was meant to be. It was meant to be the, the tikkun. The tikkun of, of all the imperfections in the Bria which were introduced because of the Chet. And therefore, tikkun ho achila is a very, very important theme in Pesach. It was eating the matzah, eating the mora, drinking the wine, when we had the base of English, eating the carbon Pesach. All these mitzvahs that are associated with eating really are to to rectify the uh, the chet. Rebbe seems to understand that the, the root of the chet, the root of the chet, is really the introduction of taiva. Right, the teira ha'isha, she saw that the fruit was attractive, the chitava hiloinayim, etc. There was pleasure, there was desire. This really was the, the downfall. Um, let me make a point that, that sometimes we, we, we forget. By analogy, when you go to a chasna, 
So there's a bracha. Asher bara sasam v'simcha chasam v'kala. We thank you, Kodesh Baruch Hu, that you made joy, chasam v'kala, etc. So what does it mean, Asher bara sasam v'simcha? You created joy. So we assume it means that a Kodesh Baruch Hu creates occasions in which we experience joy. HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings the Chas and the Kala together, he brings the Shidduchim together, so therefore we can celebrate. But it's much more fundamental than that. It was HaKadosh Baruch Hu created human beings with the capacity to experience joy. It's not just HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings about events that make us happy. HaKadosh Baruch Hu created us with the capacity to experience joy. That's an amazing thing when you think about it. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu could have made us um, even keeled, that we would not be misragesh, we would not be aroused, we would not be inspired, that uh, whatever happens in life, good things, misfortunes, as we would uh, react uh, coldly, blandly. But he made our lives that much richer by giving us the capacity to experience emotion. Not that Asher Baruch Hu Sassim V'Simcha. Not just that HaKadosh Baruch Hu creates situations that bring joy. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us the capacity to experience joy. That's something which, which makes our lives so much more meaningful. 